I share the concerns that many in our community have over the pressure to accommodate regional growth and development in Marin County. Too often, the response to these pressures has been the promotion of increasing levels of urbanization throughout the county. This has meant traffic congestion that keeps getting worse, threats to our local water supply, and continuing assaults to Marin's visual and natural environment. As your next supervisor for District 2, I will take on each of these challenges, and I will do it in a way that is open, transparent, and fiscally responsible. My dedication to the environment is long-standing and strong, something the Sierra Club specifically acknowledged with their endorsement of my campaign this year. I am committed to principles of transparency and open government. Those are principles I live by as a member of the Larkspur City Council. I am committed to resisting proposals to add more high-density development to green spaces along the 101 corridor. I am committed to enhancing environmental protections for our parks and open spaces, including a ban on the use of glyphosate-based herbicides on public lands. I am committed to dealing with our pension issues in ways that are both fiscally responsible and respectful towards the needs of our public employees. And I am committed to running my campaign in an honest and respectful way, focusing on issues, not personalities, and not the past. The challenges we face in Marin are complicated and beyond anything we have seen before. We need a new voice with the credentials and experience to confront those challenges thoughtfully and decisively. I'm prepared to be that new voice and I ask you to support me in that effort. Thank you. I've been engaged on flood control issues now for the better part of a year um, and have watched what uh, our local officials have attempted to accomplish. And I think it's actually very disappointing to me personally to see the amount of effort that has gone to accomplish virtually nothing and actually to go forward with proposals that are not transparent, that effectively utilize public processes to mask uh, the failure to actually develop comprehensive flood control strategies. I think it's important that we steer away from the current approach uh, that the county and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has emphasized, focusing on expensive and highly engineered solutions like detention basins uh, and what we're now seeing being proposed for Unit 4 in Ross. Um, that may, may, may or may not be a role for detention basins, uh, but not at public parks like Memorial Park and Lefty Gomez where money is diverted for recreational purposes and not for flood control purposes. Um, I attended the meeting last night uh, on Unit 4, and again, it's perpetuated by a need to maintain access to grants. It's not focused on actually preserving the integrity of our creek system and managing flood issues going forward to the future. We need to focus on realistic solutions that will get the water through the system, out of the system, and into the bay. And I think there are opportunities to do that without a, a, human, a, a tremendous expenditure of totally engineered solutions that don't accomplish much. One of the things that, or there are several things that kind of drove me into this run for supervisor. One was a concern over the tendency, particularly derived from the county, to promote uh, the proliferation of high density development throughout the county, not only within unincorporated lands and rent, but also in the municipalities. So that's actually a place where we can work together uh, much, much better. Uh, we have seen municipalities go forward with projects like the Wind Cup project in Court Madeira uh, on their own, which will only increase and exacerbate the traffic congestion conditions that we already have in Marin. Um, there's a failure to coordinate on housing and on density development within Marin County. The county needs to do a better job in the development of its housing elements. The county needs to do a better job in terms of its engagement with regional agencies um, to resist the impulse to uh, benefit economic interests outside of Marin and focus on solutions that are more appropriate to the natural uh, and community character of Marin County, not regional interests uh, like ABAG and MTC, because we need to focus on Sir Francis Drake. Um, Katie correctly defined the geographic scope of the problem. It's between Ross and Highway 101. There were $13 million that were originally allocated for the Sir Francis Drake Rehabilitation Project. Then mysteriously, as the project went forward, there was a decision made that we really only need about six and a half million dollars to do road rehabilitation project, freeing up another six and a half million dollars
for a wide range of potential projects that really have nothing to do whatsoever with traffic congestion. I have to take issue with Katie and the suggestion that we're taking out bike lanes. We're actually preserving the plans that the county is perpetuating now. They're just being reconfigured and being called something else. But the overall structure of the way in which the county is proposing to deal with traffic congestion hasn't changed. We need to rehabilitate the roads. We need to have three lanes going from west to east. Uh, we need to utilize that six and a half million dollars that has been freed up to focus on minimization of traffic congestion. And my personal view is that we need to uh, uh, allow the development of adaptive traffic signal control technology to improve the course of the flow that goes through uh, that corridor and onto Highway 101. We ought not to be spending money on any project as part of the rehabilitation project that has anything to do with anything other than traffic congestion. I do not believe that the county has demonstrated that Lefty Gomez will achieve a level of flood control protection uh, that they have in fact suggested that it might. And at the same time, it will require, again, a highly engineered solution that will be very expensive, that will include monies that are diverted primarily for recreational purposes, and will actually result in a playing field that's no longer suitable for kids. Sunnyside Park is a different map. Uh, I am not in principle uh, against the use of detention facilities where those facilities can be demonstrated to actually retain floodwaters and keep floods from moving down through the system. Sunnyside Park creates a potential opportunity for us to do that. And in fact, it is potentially a very desirable one because it will allow us to convert that property into something that actually does use green space in a much better way. I think I have 30 seconds still left. The, the uh, I think so. Um, yeah. Uh, there is an issue about how much it will cost, and uh, you're right, the Perrys were at the meeting the other day, I was at that meeting as well, um, and they were expressing a lot of dis dismay over the fact that they weren't being treated fairly in terms of engaging on the process of cost. So I don't actually know how much it's going to cost to do Sunnyside Park. I would like to know, I think the Perrys would like to know, and I think the community would like to know, and I'm in favor of a process that will allow us to get there. Um, we've been working on flood control now with money available to actually get something done for 10 years and actually nothing much has happened. Um, we had a meeting, I think I mentioned earlier, uh, about Unit 4 in the Ross, uh, in Cormadera Creek in, in the town of Ross. Um, that project has been percolating along for a long period of time. There's actually a timeline for implementing that project, at least according to the Corps of Engineers. The problem is we haven't been told what the project is. Uh, there was a meeting earlier in the winter, in January, uh, where the Corps and the county got up and made a presentation about their plans for doing flood control uh, in, uh, in Court Madeira Creek in that area in Ross. Uh, but they, although they initiated an environmental review process through the issuance of a notice of intent to prepare environmental impact reports, they didn't define what the project is. And it was actually only until the meeting that we had last night where they first started to outline what that project might look like. And it's a very elaborate system of berms and other barriers that would essentially line that entire stretch of the creek. It's only now that we're learning the initial scope of what that project will be. And for the county and the Corps to assume that they can just kind of barrel along with the process and get that implemented um, without sufficient public buy-in to make sure that it actually works for the community, um, actually manages flood issues, actually protects the integrity of homeowners and their properties within that community. I don't know how long it's going to take. I actually went back uh, in preparation for tonight's uh, program and looked at the civil grand jury report on homelessness in Marin, and it was frightening <laughs> to see the conclusions that were drawn in that context. And I'm, I'm glad that the county is finally taking some initiative and allocating resources to deal with homelessness within this community because they've absolutely failed to do it for years and years and years in the past. The grand jury, first thing that it noted was that although the county has done plans and studies, those are all essentially aspirational in nature. They don't provide concrete solutions to the homelessness problem within all of the communities, uh, both uh, incorporated and unincorporated Marin. The county does need to take a leadership role. It is their job. It has historically just shunted off the responsibilities for dealing with the homelessness problem primarily to San Rafael, but to Novato and other municipalities as well, and that has to stop. There are opportunities for the county to explore housing solutions to deal with homelessness, and I also support the adoption of Laura's Law. I don't understand, although that law has now been in the books, 
uh, as a statewide matter why the County of Marin has consistently refused to implement that solution to homeless process problems. It's not by any means a complete solution, but is a tool in the toolbox, and it's a shame that the county has not embraced that. Uh, I have a, a record as a member of the Larkspur City Cl Council in uh, putting local control over planning and development decisions um, as the highest priority that we need to achieve within our communities in Marin County. Um, I understand that we live in a wider Bay Area and I understand that there are regional pressures that, are, that we are facing in our local community to be responsive, and we need to do that. But the way in which planning on a regional basis has been undertaken uh, throughout the Bay Area over recent years has been awful. It has not been respectful of the needs and interests of our unique Marin County, and it's only getting worse. Uh, a year or so ago, ABAG was the big boogeyman in the room in terms of regional planning. It's actually looking better and better in light of the fact that MTC is now trying to take over ABAG and exert even more regional control and remove our ability to maintain control over our local development processes. I think it's appropriate for the county to explore, and I will do this as supervisor, to explore options that will take us away from the controlling influences of ABAG and MTC and focus on more local regional mechanisms that can accommodate the requirements of state law, sustainable communities requirements, that is part of the state law, we have to deal with that. But we can do that within the framework of local agencies, not subordinating ourselves to the agencies that we have with ABAG and MTC. I think that the National Park's attempt to subvert historical resources that we have with the farms in the Point Reyes area is a travesty. We saw the Park Service go through an exercise with the oyster farms uh, in the same area a year or two ago, essentially to take away a, a cultural resource that is very important to the character of this community. Um, the local folks lost that battle. I think it's important for us as a community to support the ranchers in their fight against the efforts of the National Park Service. There are many wonderful things the National Park Service does. Um, they have responsibilities for managing a significant amount of open space and other uh, natural properties and areas within our community. But those farms and ranches in Point Reyes are something that I remember for the last 30 years taking my kids to go and see. It's part of the culture and the heritage of this community. There's absolutely no environmental or ecological reason to take those ranches out of the system and I'm absolutely opposed to the efforts of the park system, the park service, uh, to, to challenge uh, the livelihoods of those people who maintain such a wonderful resource for our community. Uh, I think I already articulated my position on Laura's Law. I think it is a useful tool. It should have been implemented by the Board of Supervisors some time ago. They had an opportunity to do it. Now, I understand that there are costs associated with implementing that particular legislation. There are costs with implementing all kinds of legislation. I understand it as well that it's not a complete solution to dealing with the homelessness problem. I've advocated here tonight and I've advocated uh, elsewhere that the county needs to take greater leadership role instead of abdicating its responsibilities on the homelessness issue as it has done for years and years on the pa in the past. There are plenty of resources within this county, an unbelievable amount of resources within this county to apply to issues like homelessness. Laura's Law is not a complete solution, but it is a shame, as I think I said before, that the county did not take the opportunity to implement it as one strategy that can be effective and can be useful in combating homelessness in Marin County. I think it's important to make a distinction when we talk about local control. When I think about, uh, in this context, when I think about local control, I think primarily about local control over planning and development decisions, because it's those kinds of decisions where local determinations can most influence the character of our community and preserve what's important to us in our communities about living in Marin. So that's where I really focus on local control. I think there are opportunities, I know there are opportunities to consolidate services in appropriate and reasonable ways. We've done it in the city of Larkspur years ago. The city of Larkspur combined forces with the, the town of Court Madeira to form the Twin Cities Police Department. Um, more recently, we took that and combined with the police department in San Anselmo. Now we have the Central Marin uh, Police Authority. I think by every objective assessment, 
Um, that consolidation has been successful. Uh, in Larkspur, we're also looking now at opportunities to consolidate aspects of our fire uh, services within uh, Corp Madera and Larkspur, and I'm hoping we'll make good progress on that. We've engaged in joint services agreements with San Rafael to take advantage of opportunities that exist within all of our communities to make sure we're actually providing these services in a way that responds to the needs and interests of our community members and not just to maintain local control for the sake of it. When it comes to planning and development, that's one thing. I'm all in favor of that. When it comes to serving the public health and safety needs of our community, we need to look at opportunities to do that better. I was very um, grateful last summer to receive the endorsement of Citizens for Sustainable Pension Plans. That's a trip on the tongue. Um, because we met with them, I met with them, and we talked about the challenges that we face within Marin County, and more generally, the challenges that governments face throughout the state of California and the nation at large. We have a pension system that is largely out of control. It's a system that was developed in order to protect and respect the needs and interests of our public employees, and we need to continue to do that. But there are different ways to do that, and the county, in fact, has been falling down on the job in doing what it needs to do to ensure that public employees are both protected and the taxpayers are protected as well. Again, I go back to the civil grand jury and the report that was undertaken um, by that body and criticizing the county for it re repeated and prolonged efforts to essentially expand the pension program within uh, Marin County without sufficient public engagement and sufficient respect for the taxpayers within this community. There are ways that we can move towards a more responsible pension program within Marin County. We're taking opportunities now within the county as well as in the city of Larkspur to deal with our other uh, post-employment benefit plans, our OPEB liabilities. We can make progress on that. There are resources to do that without compromising the interests of the taxpayer. Again, I want to get back to your specific question, and your specific question focused on glyphosate and our respective positions regarding the use of glyphosate-based herbicides um, now, and whether that position has changed over time. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to explain my position, because it's maybe a little bit more nuanced than my opponents. When I first announced my uh, candidacy last summer, one of the first things that I stated as part of that announcement was my unequivocal opposition to the use of glyphosate-based herbicides on county properties, period. And the reason for that was that earlier in the year, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, um, a branch of the World Health Organization, listed glyphosate as a probable human carcinogen. That listing is now in the course of resulting in a determination by the Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment in Sacramento of glyphosate and glyphosate-based products as chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer. Um, it is my principled view that it is inappropriate and wrong for the county to be applying a chemical that has been listed as a known carcinogen anywhere where it can result in exposures to children, pets, adults, anyone. It's just wrong as a matter of policy. Uh, so my opposition to the use of glyphosate is focused, it's limited, it's based upon a determined specific scientific determination that that chemical is a probable human carcinogen and a regulatory determination that it will be listed as a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer. I have to say that there are, to my knowledge, no plans to put in a heliport at Marin General as part of the build out that they're doing right now. And I say that based upon a presentation by the president of the hospital at the Larkspur City Council meeting just a couple of weeks ago where that question specifically was asked and he said no because we would never get our expansion project developed if we had a heliport as part of it. So there are no plans for a heliport. In terms of the lights, I actually attended a meeting about a year or so ago sponsored by Marine Catholic where they were talking about the proposal to put lights in to support night, night games. And my reaction to that proposal at the time is the same as my reaction to it today. Well, that's interesting, but you know you're going to have to go through an extensive environmental impact analysis to evaluate the environmental impacts associated with that proposal. And I'm skeptical that after you go through that environmental impact analysis under the California Environmental Quality Act, that you'll actually be able to develop mitigations from the environmental impacts, from the traffic impacts, from the whole range of impacts that this fundamental change in use associated with night games at that stadium will ever be allowed within this community. 
So technically, I'm agnostic. If they can do the environmental review in a way that will mitigate the environmental impacts to the satisfaction of our community, then I, hard for me to say no. I think it's a bad idea, but I think it's really a community determination based upon a considered assessment of environmental impacts in full compliance with the requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act. Thank you. I, again, I kind of have to separate my own personal views about this issue from um, what um, uh, the interests of our community might be. Because I don't think we've had a full enough dialogue within the community about the merits of that particular proposal. My own personal view is that I don't want to see marijuana shops in Larksburg. I think they're a bad idea. Um, and I can explain why I have those personal views. But I don't want to put my own personal views about that issue above what the community wants to have happen. I think it's important for us to have a robust dialogue. We will have those dialogues within, I'm sure, the Larksburg City Council um, as we get closer to consideration about what that will mean within our community. Um, th these are issues that are very unique to the different communities that we have in Marin. I know that some of our communities will be more respective or more receptive to that proposal than others will be. So we have to do it on a case-by-case -case basis. We have to look at what our neighborhoods want, um, what our neighbors want, what our local businesses want in terms of the implications for having those kinds of businesses within their community. And I think once we have that dialogue, we'll uh, come up with a responsible solution. I want to just close by pointing out one thing that I think is important for all of you to know about me, which is something that I think differentiates me from the other candidates up here at the table. Um, unlike these folks, I haven't spent my entire adult life being part of the Marin political establishment. Um, I've worked for the last 30 years dedicating my entire professional career to the practice of environmental law, the private practice of environmental law. Sometimes for individuals and neighborhood groups, sometimes for small businesses and government agencies, and sometimes even for the nation's largest companies. I have never been involved in a matter where I have not been proud of my involvement. In the course of the experience that I've had during those 30 years practicing law, I've acquired the ability to see both sides of what are often complex and challenging issues. I've had the opportunity to work with adversaries to resolve what are often highly contentious disputes. And where agreement is not possible, I've had the opportunity to argue aggressively and successfully for principles that I believe in, occasionally in some of the highest courts in the nation. For those reasons, I believe I have a unique set of skills and abilities that will allow me to provide the kind of leadership we need in this county, to protect the environmental values that make the county so unique, and to genuinely enhance the welfare and interests of all of us who call Marin our home. So thank you very much. I appreciate your attention this evening. Get out and vote, um, and uh, have a good evening. Vote. Okay.